Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make threaded holes in a 3D printed plastic part. I've seen people try and make threaded holes in plastic using a tap and die set or actually modeling the threads and then 3D printing it with the threads built in. But And that may work in certain circumstances, but in my case, my problem was that I needed to mount a lot of circuit boards onto a bracket. And so you can see it here. And what I wanted was threaded holes everywhere. I was going to use three millimeter fasteners because I happen to have tons of them. And uh, so the nuts and the bolts are both three millimeter and that works great for the mounting holes on a lot of PCBs. So uh, you can see here that I'm actually 3D printing the part and I've already placed uh, the 3D printer paused for me to place nuts in these kind of gaps that were designed in the in the uh, model and then it 3D prints right over them. So you end up with something like this which is a test that I made where it's just a little cylinder that has a hidden captive nut inside of it and uh, I can thread a bolt right through it. It works great and I use it for lots of things now that I would normally uh, assume I'd have to create using some other method other than 3D printing. So I'm going to show you how to reproduce this test that I made and uh, here I am in Fusion 360. All I'm going to do is create a sketch on the top work plane and it's just going to be the same as that one that I showed you so I'll make a circle that's about 25 millimeters let's say and I need that hole in the middle uh, which is going to be uh, the size of my fastener, which is three millimeters. Three millimeters works fine. Even though that's the actual size of the bolt, I know that it fits through a three millimeter hole just fine. I'll finish this sketch. And actually what I'm going to do is uh, from the home view there, I'm going to highlight both of these uh, profiles that were made and I'm going to extrude up. I think the thickness of this will be, let's say uh, six millimeters. And, um, you know, there are a couple ways that I could do this. I could, I could actually have uh, extruded it without that center profile and I'd have the hole in there already. But I think I'm going to extrude the hole afterward and you'll see why. It doesn't matter. There's plenty of ways to do this really simple thing. So the next thing I need to do is make essentially a, ga a gap in the center of this body that's going to hold my uh, three millimeter nut. So let me use an offset plane and I will make the offset plane come off of the XZ work plane. And I'll make that work that uh, this new work plane that I'm creating or construction plane 1.5 millimeters from that bottom surface. Now, the reason why I'm doing that, you know, 1.5 isn't an arbitrary number. Uh, essentially, it has to do with the 3D printer. And, and the way that you uh, decide to print. So the Prusa printer that I used has different layer heights available to it. And uh, you can see here that if you use a higher layer height or a thicker layer height, it will print faster. The quality won't be quite as good though. And in this case, if I used a 0.2 millimeter uh, layer height, I'd have a problem when I try and print a, um, you know, that the, the number of layers that I get to before my uh, construction plane that I just started. So my construction plane is 1.5 millimeters off of the bottom. If I'm using two millimeter uh, layer thicknesses, then uh, we'll end up with kind of like half of a, uh, a layer, which is not ideal. So what we'll do instead is print with 0.1 as a layer height, and that'll work out great. It'll, it'll actually print 15 layers before it leaves, starts leaving that space for my captive nut. So I'm going to create a uh, sketch on that new construction plane that I just created, and I will just use the polygon feature. There are two different ones, circum, well, the two that I normally use are circumscribed or inscribed. So inscribed basically asks you for the radius from the center to one of the points of the polygon. In my case, I'm going to use the center uh, to, the, to one of the faces um, or one of the edges, so flat edges there. So I'm going to just, it's already set to six sides, but I'm gonna put in the actual radius here, which three point oops, three three point four three worked great for this uh nut i just measured it and it worked on the first try so i'm using that number because it works out great now you can see that the uh the sketch shows blue lines right now all of the sketch curves are blue and that means that it's not fully constrained i've got a dimension in there but you can see that it's able to spin which isn't really a problem for me but i do like to have all of my sketches be fully constrained. So I can choose a horizontal vertical constraint here and now everything turns black because it's sort of stuck in this position. 
when I hit finish sketch, I can use that uh, profile that I just made and actually extrude and a cut into this body. And that'll be the space that's left for the nut that I'm going to uh, insert in there. So let me just hide, I'm gonna select that face, that profile that I just made. And I need to know how high the nut is or how much space it needs. And again, I, I measured this and it was 2.4 millimeters. I tried it once and it worked great. So that's what I'll use. Now, I have a problem here. It didn't actually do what I wanted. Let me go back to that extrude. Oh no, it did. It's just that I can't see it, right? So it did a cut. It was smart enough to know that I wanted to cut. And if I really wanted to know if it worked, I can do an inspection and section analysis, and I'll be able to see if I select the work plane that's going down the middle here. I'll be able to see it did make a void in there. I'll just hit cancel though. Um, so now I've got that hole in the middle for, for the nut, or not in the middle, but 1.5 millimeters from the bottom. And now I want this hole that goes all the way through so the fastener can actually get there. So now I'll just go back to that original sketch uh, profile with the circle in the middle, and I'll extrude that all the way through. So I just move it a little bit, and then instead of choosing distance, I'll choose all and hit OK. So now we can, again, look at uh, different section analysis. For example, if we look at uh, this section analysis, we can see that it's a hole, and then eventually it gets to this void, and uh, and then there's the rest of my hole. So this is literally what the 3D printer will do, right? It'll, it'll go 1.1 1 .1 millimeters at a time until it gets here. And in the slicer software, uh, all slicer software, I think, is capable of this at this point. Uh, I use the Prusor uh, slicer, and it had an option for this. Uh, and so does Cura. So basically you insert a pause and the 3D printer will pause. It'll wait for you to do whatever you need to do and then it'll continue with the print. So uh, we don't want it to stop here though. What we actually wanted to do is stop here. So it's actually 1.5 millimeters, but it'll keep printing until it gets to another 2.4 millimeters. It'll pause here. Uh, you'll plop the nut in there and then have it 3D print right over it. And you can see normally this would be an overhang that 3D printing doesn't work well with, but it's actually 3D printing right on top of the nut. So there is a support there for it. And that's it. That's really how easy it is. And um, you can see what that looks like when it's 3D printing here. After you put the nut in, it just 3D prints right over it and you've got a threaded hole in your part. Hopefully that helps. Uh, keep keep an eye out on the channel because I'm going to post another video that shows how I use the automate feature to create that bracket for all of the uh, PCBs that I needed to mount. That's kind of interesting too, because it's a, it's a really efficient way to just come up with a, a, a straightforward, really simple, quick design that just takes all of these threaded holes and essentially connects them together using the automate feature. Okay, take care.